My name is Patrick Dolans. I'm a professor of economics and this is the American Democracy Project that I've been working on. Uh, we're getting close to our second year of active involvement in the project. Um, I went to a conference two years ago that Mel Nats Hammer uh, asked me to attend and, and come back with my impressions and it was just absolutely incredible beyond my expectations. I, within an hour of being at the conference, discovered that this was a project that spoke to um, precisely who we are and who we want to be at Kent State College, and came back and we've been working on it ever since. The American Democracy Project is the brainchild of George Mahaffey, who is one of the leaders at the American Association of State Colleges and Universities. George Mahaffey believes that perhaps the greatest public purpose of our colleges and universities is to train uh, the citizens, the active engaged citizens of, of the future so that we can deal with the complex problems that, that we face more effectively. The American Democracy Project at Keene State College uh, really began with a pilot program that we signed on for. Provost Netzhammer enrolled us in the program about two years ago. There are nine campuses nationwide that are part of this initiative. It's called America's Future. It's co-sponsored by the American Association of State Colleges and Universities and the nonpartisan group Public Agenda. To me, the American Democracy Project is about reminding and then empowering students to act on the principle that they're part of something that, that's bigger than themselves. That they came to us from communities, they're nurtured and supported throughout their college careers by families and, and other communities that, that they belong to. And with that awareness comes a responsibility, an obligation to give something back. One of the, the most powerful insights to me is the idea that um, when they get civically engaged and involved in their communities, they then begin to discover that the, the well-being and the health of those communities, in fact, is essential to their own health and well-being. We've become a, a culture of spectators. The American people have, have gotten far less um, civically involved than, than prior generations, uh, particularly younger people. And yet, at the same time, our national and our international problems are more complex than they've ever been before. And for us to continue down that path of sitting on the sidelines, opting out, letting somebody else deal with it, um, seems to me that, that it spells greater problems rather than solutions. That we really are grappling with stuff that's, that's not the material of traditional courses. There aren't textbooks that are written for courses on the future of the national debt and the future of entitlement programs. And so a lot of this is, is built from scratch and we design it as we go. It's, um, it's been daunting, but it's been worthwhile. One of, of my colleagues in political science, as part of this pilot, discovered that really students can't think of effectively about national finance and, and questions of the, the sustainability of, of national budgetary issues without first grappling with their own finances. And so we incorporated a personal finance component, which for many students was really the first time they thought about budgeting and finance on a very personal scale. But once they get a handle on that, the national questions become much more manageable. I think that uh, one of the challenges that, that we faced early on and continue to face is the, the isolation that, that people sort of carry around with them all the time. Um, faculty doing their own thing, students sort of in their own, own worlds. And so building community is about overcoming that, that isolation, the silos that, that we all operate within. And some of the work that we've done on campus particularly around um, faculty, staff, and administration who are familiar with the American Democracy Project and want to be, become more involved, is about breaking down those silos and, and building that community and doing the work it takes to, to nurture a group that, that shares common values and, and common interests. I think with students, the challenge is, is a little bit different. 
Uh, many of our traditional classes are taught in a way where there's a list of, of content outcomes, maybe some skill outcomes, and then they jump through the necessary hoops and, and take the final exam and, and they're done. It goes on the transcript. And so to get students to think outside of that box, to think about what happens beyond the classroom walls and how the course and the course content could be related to what happens outside the classroom, that, that's a really daunting challenge. Um, but when they get that, it, it generates an, an energy of its own and, and takes on a, you know, a momentum that, that makes it um, much easier. One of the things that we've done, we did last semester in two courses that are tied to this pilot program, was to simulate Congress. We had one class that was the Senate and one class that was the House of Representatives. We created our own political parties, we called them Lions, Tigers. We had a Liger party, which was our, our third party in, in the middle. Students answered a series of questions about national financial issues. We used those as a basis to um, assign them the, the various sort of ideological uh, groups that the Lions, the Tigers, and the Ligers represented. And then they wrote legislation. They debated the bills and, and reached decisions the way that legislative bodies do, and they worked across the, the two different um, House and, and, and Senate simulations that we had. It was really interesting to see that, that some students that would have um, not maybe excelled if the course had been strictly traditional exams and quizzes and papers, uh, really came out of their shells and, and came alive and, and got very excited about the course because it had this other component. I, I remember at, at one point I had stayed after class for uh, something and then was wandering back to my office across the campus probably about 30 minutes after the, the course had, had been dismissed for the day and I saw two of the students who had emerged as, as leaders in different political parties in our simulation having a very animated conversation as they walked across the quad and it was just a moment where I realized that this course had, had left the classroom and, and really infected the students in a way that, um, that went beyond just what I was asking and what I would traditionally have, have expected to see. One of the, the most exciting parts of, of this experiment was that at the end of the semester, a course that had, I believe, 23, 24 students enrolled, Five students wanted to stay at after the last class and just talk about in, in very animated ways what happens next, what other courses can I take. One young woman who's a dance major revealed that she was now thinking about minoring in political science. She wasn't going to change her major, but this had opened up a whole new world for her. That's the kind of, of outcome that, that really makes this an exciting project. For me, when I first in encountered the American Democracy Project, I was reminded of, of something on the, the gateway to Appian Way that says, enter to learn, go forth to serve. And that's what the American Democracy Project is about. It's about using the resources and the vision of the institution to really foster the, the values, the skills, and uh, remind people that, that there's, there's a motivation behind taking what they've learned and applying it in the communities to make their communities better. If, if I could have one wish, it would be for um, the, the virus that, that I think of the American Democracy Project as representing to, to continue to spread in terms of, of a contagion effect and to continue to infect new people um, for the enthusiasm and the excitement that I've seen in, in faculty and staff and administrators um, really sustain itself and for people to not get discouraged or uh, lose hope at, at the sign of, of various obstacles that will inevitably come along. If, if we can maintain that excitement that we really are a part of a community and this is an opportunity to do things differently in a way that really will make a difference, um, that would be my hope.